small theater play. play. It's a matinee performance today, only for you. So, enjoy. <laughs> enterprise architecture. They don't understand it, they don't want to learn more about it. Please, darling, don't speak so loudly about enterprise architecture here. Well, well, what are you doing? I have to close the windows. Why? <laughs> Why? You know, this is an agile world we're living in. And people don't really like enterprise architecture here. Oh, uh, so what? I can say what I think. I believe in enterprise architecture. I believe in enterprise architecture. Please, please, please. The neighbors can hear you. <laughs> Nobody cares about enterprise architecture here. I told you. Do you know what? They don't believe in it because they don't even know what it is. Do you know what I'm going to do now? I'm going to ring on every door in our house and to explain to our neighbors what the enterprise architecture is. Well, well, maybe you can surely do that, but you know, they don't work with software development as we do, and they might not understand you. Well, I can tell you one thing. Every single company has an enterprise architecture, regardless if it is an implicit or an explicit one, and regardless if it is software development company or not. I'm going to be able to describe it on a higher macro level to everyone. Now I'm going to ask our neighbors. You will see. Ding ding, ding ding. Oh, hello, I'm your neighbor. I'm living upstairs. Sorry that I disturb you now during the dinner time. Do you know what enterprise architecture is? Who are you? I'm your neighbor. It's upstairs, please, please. Do you need an explanation? What is Okay, just wait a minute. So, you know, every company has some business and business strategies. On the other side, there is execution. And there is something in between. So, enterprise architecture is used to map all business strategies yeah. to the execution. Ah, well, 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 well. Do you know what your enterprise architects are doing in that cloud? Creating bubbles. <laughs> bubbles that can't break. Well, okay, I'll give them a little bit of slack. They can do rectangles as well, right? <laughs> yes. Ha ha ha, you are really very funny. You see, if you take a look behind that cloud, there is a lot of business capabilities, and the enterprise architecture is a management tool for aligning the business and technology initiatives throughout the company. Oh, well, 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 it's a tool. Well, you know, we Agile people, we prefer uh, people who communicate over processes and tools. The Agile Manifesto, you know? All this sounds very abstract and complex. Just a thing to invent if you want to make more money as a consultant, in fact. But there's perhaps quite a lot of money to be made there, I think. Yes, honey, of course that I know of the Agile Manifesto. You mentioned it on our first date. I 
Don't you remember? Year 2001. But in a big company, if you don't build a good foundation for execution... Uh, oh my god, no, 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 no. Here it comes again. A big foundation for execution. Mm -hmm. Here it comes again, the perfect abstract framework utopia that is never finished. You know that this sounds uh, theoretically right, but when people start to do this, uh, it results in something fluffy, very abstract, and very, very far away from everyday needs. In fact, this sounds a lot like building a framework before starting development. Don't you remember the six-layer framework company where we met? When we started, you came to my company? Yeah? What happened? It went bankrupt, didn't it? Yes, well, maybe that's true. I know that, uh, unfortunately, the introduction of enterprise architecture resulted in similar situations at uh, many companies. But I don't believe uh, neither in uh, complex frameworks or big upfront design. You remember all my talks about agile architecture, don't you? What I believe in is a good balance of intentional architecture and emergent design. But you know, the emergent design is a very good idea, but it doesn't scale. Uh, usually emergent design is not enough. It's not sufficient to respond on complexity of large-scale system development. So you result in a, there are some problems with a, when you just let design emerge. Excessive redesign and delays, which leads to flow bottleneck, different architectures to support same capabilities, reduced coagulation and synchronization among teams, and low reuse of components. That's why you need, there is a need for intentional architecture at the same time to support the bigger picture. A set of purposeful planned architectural initiatives that enhance solution design. And the best thing is when they are combined. So on the team level, you have teams and they are working with emergent design. They let design emerge. On the other side, you have a team of architects who are taking care about the uh, uh, intentional architecture. So, on the one side, intentional architecture constrains the emergent design, while emergent design corrects the intentional architecture. So, all the time, you have that nice balance. It's exactly what Safe Process Framework recommends. So, you see, there is a need for enterprise architecture. Someone, regardless if it is an agile company or not, someone who is taking care about that intentional architecture initiatives. Well, let me see. I, I'm still not quite sure, but there is some truth in what you're saying. But I think that what you're describing is a little bit on the table of a good product owner. He should take care of many of these things. Oh, well, I'm so hungry. So I have to eat something before we continue this discussion. So please keep reading your book, and I'm going to prepare a dinner, as I've promised yesterday. Uh, quite enough. So, uh, have you finished your 
So, so the product owner, in fact, if you go back to the definition, is uh, responsible for defining user stories. We all know that. Uh, prioritizing the Scrum backlog, right? But he's also responsible for maintaining the conceptual and technical integrity of the team's products. And he should work with system solution architect engineering on the infrastructure. So what more do you need? Have you finished your soup? Yep. Now it's a main course. What's this? What's this? Chibachichi? But chibachichi is not French. I thought we were having a French dinner. Chibachichi doesn't go well with bouillabaisse. It just doesn't... Ça se marie pas. <laughs> well, anyway, I have to eat it. Well, I'm so hungry, so... Ugh. But... <laughs> what the hell? This tastes horrible. Is this uh, pork meat as it's supposed to be? No, it's a duck meat. What? Duck meat? Ah, well. <laughs> <laughs> Never heard of duck meat in Chivapchichi. I, I, I don't understand. It, it, this doesn't match the bouillabaisse and it's not even Chivapchichi. What kind of dinner is this? Well, you got a dinner without an enterprise architecture function. <laughs> so, you see what happens when there is nobody who is translating the strategy to the execution. From the beginning, it was planned to be a very nice French dinner. So, the product owner of the team responsible for starters were, was working on their backlog list and were preparing the wheelbase. Product owner of the team responsible for main dish were planning to prepare Macré de Canard. But what happens at the same time, the sales department wrote just signed a very important contract to sell Chevapchichi because one of the new strategies is to expand on the Eastern European market. It was so time pressed that the product owner responsible for the main course had to reprioritize their bell lock and start producing Chevapchichi immediately. But since they didn't have any architectural drivers, they had to enablers, they had to produce Chevapchichi out of the duck meat, which was planned for Magret de Canard. And you see what happens. So they they were thinking, oh, it doesn't matter. It's just one one of solution. But they didn't realize that they just created the leakers in the system because we have to continue producing chivapchichi out of the duck meat. Additionally, duck meat is more expensive than the pork meat. So this solution is going to cost us much more compared to the money that we are going to earn on it. And what happens now? We have to throw all this dinner. Do you see how much waste we introduced in the system? So no one measured, uh, sorry, so nobody, you see, it was the sales department and no one measured received versus delivered value. So our revenue is not good at all. The company is losing money. Well, baby, what you are describing is exactly what the product owner should do. Communicate the strategy and prioritize customer and sales requirements. No, it's enterprise architecture. No, it's just strategy, vision and requirements. No, it's product, it's enterprise architecture. No, it's product owner strategy. Please stop arguing, you're talking about the same thing. Did you hear what he said? <coughs> Maybe he's right. But enterprise architecture came first, even in ancient Egypt. You see on the picture, here is a chief, enterprise architect, and he's holding the sun on his head. It means that he's taking care about the whole enterprise architecture. No, 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 no. This is a gross misinterpretation. Everyone can clearly see that this is the pharaoh discussing the Kanban board for the building of the pyramids. Yes, maybe that's the product owner discussing
discussing the number board, but he's just thinking about and taking care about the prioritization of the backlog and the features which should be implemented. But he's not taking care about the architecture. Usually, product owners are so focused on delivering features to the customers. They don't care if those features fits to the general product architecture picture. So, it's not, uh, it's not product owners who are worrying if some new features are going to introduce the ways and the legacy in the system. Frankly speaking, I haven't met so many product owners who come from the architectural side. Usually they are former project managers or QA members, but software architects? No, no. So that's why there should be need that someone do all that kind of work to take care about the architecture. Something like architecture owner, as Scott Ambler says. Well, I've certainly seen the kind of problem you're describing too. Especially old project managers seem to be problematic in this aspect. But, well, when reading uh, Roman Pitcher's book about uh, uh, product ownership, it's clear, however, that what you're describing is an anti-pattern. A product owner needs to be qualified. So, Jeff Sutherland says, ah, A product owner needs to be a domain expert. He needs to be an engineering expert who has written software himself, in fact. He needs to be a requirements expert, and he needs to be sales-oriented as well. And he's in charge of what features are to be delivered to the customers. And he's also in charge of the revenue for the product. Wow! I really like this uh, Jeff Sutherland definition of product owner. It's almost like describing an enterprise architect. But where can you find such a superman or superwoman, someone who can manage doing all those things? Well, of course, a product owner cannot do it all by himself normally, of course. So he needs help from the team. Well, maybe he even needs help from an architect, in fact. And it's also the role of the team to defend their uh, architecture and defend the integrity of their system. They should talk back. Oh, you know, it's difficult to defend the architectural integrity in a sales-driven organization when contracts are signed before anyone has time to check with the architecture responsible people, regardless if they are product owners or enterprise architects. It's not that salespeople don't want to check it. They simply don't have a time. They don't have a time to write business cases and so on. It's the business market which drives such fast pace of events. <sighs> well, I'm sorry, that's the wrong way of doing things. If you live in a fast-changing environment, you need a fast-changing way of working. Individuals and interactions over processes and tools. Working software over comprehensive documentation. The manifesto, you know? <sighs> well, anyway, after such a nice enterprise architecture dinner, or starter, I will still make an effort and I will try to apply what you're teaching here and try to make a nice enterprise architecture dessert for you and the kids. I'll try to use all this new stuff. Uh, it won't take long. Just wait. Oh, thank you, darling. <laughs> wait a bit, honey. I, I just have to finish reading this uh, Food of 3.0 book. Framework. It's really interesting stuff, I think. I, I just need to make a, a model, model of the, of the ingredients and the tools that we have so, so that I know uh, what I uh, will be able to cook. Uh -huh. 
I'm on, I'm just fi finishing getting all these extra ingredients and tools for the architectural runway. It takes a bit time with the ordering system. <laughs> Lots of things have to be prepared in order for this to be working.
in fact, uh, in a bigger company, you might have to scale this a little bit. So there might be a chief product owner who's like taking care of the entire product if it consists of several subsystems. And uh, you could have some help from a chief architect, in fact. That, that, that could be helpful. Especially if uh, he has the strategy of uh, doing architecture by walking around. I, I really like that idea. Yes, exactly. They should do that architecture by walking around, collecting knowledge and etc. And all of them should work together according to the Scott Tumblr principles for performing our enterprise architecture in an agile way. Look at this. Like evolutionary collaboration over blueprinting, communication over perfection, active stakeholder participation, enterprise architects who work actively with all development teams, capturing details with working code, enablement over inspections, and so on and so on. So darling, does it mean that we have agreed upon enterprise architecture and the product owner roles? Yes, Bob. And then they lived happily ever after. <laughs> Can we head up in the door? No, you can stay up.